Hello everyone and welcome to the Back to Space News Flash where we are talking about things that are currently happening, things that are going to happen, and things that have happened in space. I am still sick. Uh, I had a terrible stomach infection that landed me in the hospital. Here's a cute little photo of me looking super attractive with the balloon. But again, this episode is going to be relatively short and to the point. Let's start with my favorite section, things I mispronounced from last week. Oh wait, there's nothing amazing, finally. Oh, just kidding, none of y'all caught it, but the associate administrator of NASA, Bob Jacobs, my mentor and friend did. I was sleeping in a wonderful soft blanket of ignorance when I woke up to a text that the picture of the all-female spacewalk was actually the wrong woman. Oh my God, my bad, I'm so sorry, Bob Jacobs. I didn't mean to make you, make, disappoint you. So here's the correct image. All right, going into this week's news, let's start off with some rather sad news. Alexei Lenov, the first human to walk in space, died at age 85. Alexei was a legendary Soviet cosmonaut who became the first human to walk into space 54 years ago. Showing off just how much of a space pioneer Lenov was, NASA interrupted its live television coverage of a spacewalk by two Americans outside the International Space Station to report Lenov's death. Lenov's 12-minute spacewalk preceded the first U.S. spacewalk by Ed White by less than three months. He is a legend, and we all appreciate his accomplishments and everlasting impact of space exploration that he left. In other lighter news, a reconciliation. SpaceX and NASA declare a shared mission after sparring. Kumbaya, my friends. So basically, last week, our man Jim Bridenstine stopped by headquarters of our other guy, Elon Musk, in Southern California. They both were taking questions from reporters, and both men were complimentary towards each other and said they shared the same goals. Quote, to launch NASA astronauts to the International Space Station on SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule as soon as possible, but not before the spacecraft has passed all the needed tests. Then Musk went on to say that they were on to partner with NASA to make this happen and that it's a dream come true. <gasps> wow. Basically, these two are frenemies because they both need one another, but they all have their own missions. But I can sense peace and love and understanding between them both. <sighs> That's a dog hair. As we mentioned last week, it was astronaut Charlie Duke's birthday where he turned 84. However, a simple cake and ice cream weren't enough for this year's celebration. He became the first NASA astronaut to drink champagne in space. On board the same flight was runner Usain Bolt, who decided to see if he was the fastest man in space as well as on Earth. Talk about overachiever. NASA released a new CGI moon kit in 8K that makes it easier for 3D artists to make renders of the moon. So all of y'all flat mooners can suck it. It's round. A Russian cosmonaut created meat 248 miles away from any natural resources. Cells of a cow were taken into space where they were grown into a small scale muscle tissue using a 3D bioprinter. Aleph Farms, an Israeli food technology company, said the aim of the experiment was to advance its research into meat production and prove meat can be a producer without natural resources. They went on to say that this technology could make long-term travel possible and renew space exploration. But for right now, their goal is to sell meat on Earth. Next stop, in and out in space. Astronomers have found 20 new moons orbiting Saturn, bumping its total to 82 moons. That surpasses Jupiter, which was the prior reigning champion with 79 moons. When I grow up, I want to have the most moons of all. You can do it, Saturn. Just believe. The moons were discovered by the team led by Scott S. Shepard at the Carnegie Institute for Science and using the Subaru Telescope. A car with a telescope? Now that is the future! Subaru. The European Space Agency probe captured a new picture of a 434.96 mile dried up river system on Mars. This is pretty cool because it actually does show that this planet may not be as different as we think to our own little home, Earth. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your past? This day in space, October 13th, 1773,
just a little bit of time ago, Charles Messier discovered the Whirlpool Galaxy. Messier was scanning the sky for objects that he could confuse comet hunters when he cataloged the galaxy as M51. However, Messier wasn't able to see the spiral structure, and he didn't identify it as a galaxy. 72 years later, another astronomer named William Parsons saw the Whirlpool shape, but he thought it was a spiral nebula. Eventually, Edwin Hubble, our guy Hubble, found out that M51 and other features like it were actually galaxies. That's nuts. The future is bright. The future is bright. That's a new song. I just wrote it. Boeing has set a new launch date for the first orbital flight of its new commercial crew vehicle that will soon be transporting astronauts to and from the International Space Station. The unpiloted Starliner capsule is scheduled to launch to the ISS on December 17th, 2019. Guys, it's October. For this mission titled Orbital Flight Test, OFT, the Starliner space capsule will launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on an Atlas V rocket and dock with the International Space Station, where it will stay for about a week, nice little vacation time, before making a parachute assist landing at the White Sand Missile Range in New Mexico. Guys, the space race is happening. The UK is sending its first rover to the moon and it's going to be tiny called the Space Bit. Oh. The Space Bit rover will be unlike the others. Instead of wheels, it will walk around the moon surface on legs. That's amazing. Space Bit hopes that the legs will help future generations of rovers explore tubular caves on the moon created by ancient lava flows, which hasn't been done before. Quote, the legs could be better for steep, rocky terrain, and basically any place where wheels start to struggle. And now as we're doing in every one of these, we are honoring one of the Back to Space student ambassadors. Today we have MJ Whitaker. She is a 16 year old and lives in Jupiter, Florida. She also is a sister to another student ambassador, Clement Whitaker. They like to take full advantage of living just two hours away from Cape Canaveral and try to go to as many launches as they can. She's a musician at heart and plays the cello and piano, part of three different orchestras and have been involved with music for over 10 years. She also has a side hobby of photography and started her own business taking senior portraits. And that's it for the Back to Space News Flash. Thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. Hopefully next week I'll be back and uh, not uh, contagious. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button, like, get notified, and we'll see you next week.